Perfect. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Dima. I'll be guiding you through your. I'll be guiding you through your practice today. Um, I just wanted to give a quick heads up about our Instagram. It has been a little bit finicky in the last few days. So if you are with us on Instagram, please, if we get disconnected, go to our Facebook page, um, Mystic Fitness Facebook page, and we're streaming the same exact thing there, and that's been a lot more reliable. So um, apologies about that, but we've got um, a good plan going if we get disconnected. So I'll have everybody come into a comfortable place on their mats. Let your awareness find the ground beneath your body. And allow the breath to begin to slow down as much as possible. I'd like to soften the belly area as the breath begins to slow down. It allows for a little bit more space for the breath to fill up the belly. And for the breath to rise upwards through the ribs and all the way up through the heart space. that the belly is softened and that the chest area has began to soften. Invite your attention further back down to the ground and let the sensation of earth itself be your anchor. Notice how the breath now is becoming more and more elongated. Each in-breath, there is the potential to expand the breath, maybe even to the count of six. And as the breath descends back down and releases out of the body to the count of six, there is the opportunity to release all of the tension back down to the ground. See if you can also soften the pelvic floor muscles, the inner thigh muscles. And see if you can also open the channels around the heart a little bit to allow for uh, receiving, a sense of receiving around your chest, around your heart. The palms can start to face upwards if they're not in this gesture of openness. And a little bit of surrender. This openness to receive. an acknowledgement that there is a greater intelligence, greater than the ego self, that we bow to and acknowledge. And with each in-breath, take it into our hearts.
One more deep in breath. And sigh it out. Wherever you are, begin to rub the palms together. And we're getting ready to open the practice with the sacred sound of Om. If you like to remain reclined with your hands on your chest, you can do that. Or rolling up into a seated position if you wish. Right hand on the heart, left hand on top of the heart, left on top of the right hand. Finding this uh, gentle, soft openness. Sometimes it's referred to as the divine feminine. It has nothing to do with male or female. It's this uh, feminine energy that is in the universe, that of Mother Nature. It is a receiving force, also a uh, Powerful, powerful force. And with that openness, we bow and open ourselves with the sound of Om, a cleansing breath together. <sighs> Inhale. slowly start to move the body. If you are all seated or reclined, it doesn't really matter. But if you are reclined, just start to slowly make your way into a seated position, expanding the arms overhead as you get there, circling the wrists around. A few circles to the right and a few circles to the left. And then begin to expand the arms in different directions, allowing for some movements throughout the arms and the shoulders, maybe shrugging the shoulders up and down and around. And slowly make your way into a standing position. I like to stand directly on the grass. If you are comfortable doing that, step off your mat for a little bit to find the grass underneath your feet, to find the earth beneath you. And begin to experience this like, almost like the suction cupping with the ground as you lift your toes off the ground and kind of spread them wide and let them release back down. And with a little bit of a bend in the knees, let there, there be a sense of release down to the ground. Relax shoulders, relax belly, relax palms open. Receptivity, full receptivity. While maintaining this connection with the earth, begin to move your arms upwards all the way up towards the sky. With the in-breath and on the out-breath, start to bend towards your right side as you relax your right shoulder. And then coming back to center and bending towards your left side, expanding the right arm up and over, relaxing your left shoulder. And then continue with this motion back and forth, 
All the while you are fully leveraging the energy from the ground and letting the energy kind of rise all the way upwards through your legs, into your bodies. And you're fully releasing the tension from your bodies back down to the earth. So you are fully aware of your feet the entire time. And after you've made some of those motions, now allow the body to start to do some different motions. Maybe hands on the hips as you circle the hips around. Maybe you separate the feet a little bit wider and start to kind of rock side to side. Maybe there's the opportunity to kind of expand the hips forward and back, throw out some wider circles around the hips. And after you've felt this like connection from ground all the way up, begin to return to this standing position, Tadasana, mountain pose, feet hip distance apart, palms at heart center, and we'll take our time to reground once again with a deep in breath. On the out breath, you bend the knees, you hinge from the hips, and bring your elbows onto your thighs and come into this forward fold to begin with. That's a little bit less foldy than the rest of the folds. And if your body is comfortable coming all the way down into a fold, feel free to do so. And start to kind of let your knees bend and extend. Down and up, dropping hips down, lifting them up. Shaking the head no and yes, and allowing for the entire body to feel this contact with the ground. So incredibly healing, we don't even realize it. But we need this earth beneath our feet more than we realize. And after you've made some of those motions, fully release your arms down towards the ground. Maybe you bend the knees and walk the hands over towards your right side. Stay there for a bit, bending knees as much as needed and walking the hands towards the left. And as you return back to the center, replant your elbows on your thighs, drop your hips sway down so that you're in a squat and then take a twist towards the left expanding your left arm all the way up with a deep in breath on the out breath thread the arm down kind of sweeping the grass and come back and twist again inhale exhale sweeping down and again Two more times. Last time. Beautiful. Plant both elbows on the thighs again. Drop your hips a lot. And take it to the other side. Opening up to the right as you inhale. And on the exhale, release and sweep. I want to bring your attention, if you haven't noticed already, there's the beautiful sound of this one bird that is really part of this practice with us. And it comes and goes. You can release your elbows back down onto your thighs. Plant both hands on the thighs with the inhale. Open up through the heart, drawing the chest forward and up. 
And with the exhale, release the chest down, grab a hold of in the thighs, in between the thighs, and curl upwards, finding this nice strong curl throughout the spine. Do it again. Inhale, arch, tilt tailbone back. And exhale, curl. Two more times. In and out. Look down and curl. And again. And curl. Eventually release your forward fold as far down as it's comfortable. Maybe you start drawing the hips a little bit higher. And then at one point, take your time to plant the palms down and step back into a plank pose. Allow yourselves to find a really strong plank, activating hands into the earth and allowing for this activation to press the floor away. Squeeze your thighs a lot. Take it in together. On the exhale, slowly lower the knees only, draw the chest forward, and take a few push-ups just to warm up the upper body a little bit. Allow the elbows to press back directly. And see if you can lower down without dipping into your shoulders so that you're not actually internally rotating those shoulders. Keep them externally rotated. After you take a few push-ups and you're feeling the fire in your upper body, press yourself back up and then lower all the way down to the ground, allowing the belly to touch the ground. The legs extend down, activating shoelace sides of the feet. Open your heart up into cobra pose. Here the elbows are gonna draw back. And the hands are going to lift off the ground fully. Keep length throughout the neck, crown of the head drawing forward. And breathe. Find the strength in your upper back. Squeeze your butt, squeeze your glutes muscles a lot. Deep in breath. On the out breath, press into the hands into the ground and rise. And come on up into a downward facing dog as you extend the hips up and back. Start to pedal the feet a bunch of times. And some of us are choosing to just be f straight on the grass, which I find really comfortable. Some of us don't like the wetness of the grass, which is also understandable. And after you do a few pedaling, shift back and forth a few times between a plank and a downward dog. And let your bodies kind of choose how long you want to stay in plank and how long you want to stay in downward dog. And at one point, it'll start to feel really, really lovely to maybe hold the downward dog just a little bit longer as you relax your neck and shake the head no and yes. Bend your knees a lot, press your hips back. Feel the activity of that pressing as you look forward in breath. With the out breath, walk or float forward to come into a forward fold. Take it in together as you activate the feet into the ground and rise up all the way, inhale. On the exhale, you bow, hinging from the hips, palms at heart space as you bow, bending the knees. Inhale, a half lift. Exhale, plant palms, step back, plank pose. Let that activity of pressing away from the earth be felt. And then if you like to do those push-ups, do them again before finding baby cobra. Another option is to keep the knees off the ground when you're doing the push-ups. And as you lower down, maybe not lowering all the way down, but to a halfway, for upward facing dog versus cobra. Either way is fine. Cobra is a wonderful, wonderful position that I personally prefer. 
back to your downward dog. However you get there is great. The key is to take your time in between the transitions because each pose is an actual pose of its own. It's not like linking all of those poses together. Feel the effect of the downward dog. And if you really press into the balls of the fingers, the pads of the hands, and roll the shoulders down the back, loosening up through the neck. This inversion effect is super, super peaceful. We'll take the right leg and raise it to the sky with the inhale. On the exhale, bring the knee towards the chest as you curl. In, lengthen it back. Out, knee to the chest. Step the foot to the right thumb. Make your way into your warrior one. Back foot walks forward slightly, dials down. There's this beautiful you know, placement of the foot so that it's hip distance so that you don't have to kind of be sitting on one line, but more kind of feet hip distance apart. The torso can face the front. And there's the opportunity to just let the hands rest where they want to rest, potentially in goal post. Draw the chest forward and up as you squeeze shoulder blades muscles towards one another. Inhale. On the exhale, take your time to bring the elbows towards one another. Like you're squeezing and squeezing, squeezing into your chest. And again, inhale, open. And exhale, squeeze, 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 squeeze. Let's do that four more times in. And out. Hold it at the front, draw the elbows back, and hinge to hover at the front thigh while you press those elbows upwards. Relax your neck, draw more length throughout the crown of the head forward. Breathe it in. And eventually extend your arms back, threading the energy through the fingertips going backwards. And if it feels comfortable to interlace the hands behind the back, feel free to do so and bow forward into a humble warrior. One more deep in breath together. On the out breath, rise on up into your warrior one. And then take your hands to your hips as you extend through your front leg to come on all the way down for Parshvottanasana Pyramid Pose. Here you're elongating that front leg and there's this real kind of drawing back of the hips. And you're trying not to lock your front knee. Blocks are wonderful if you have your own blocks or water bottle. One more deep in breath together. On the out breath, come into your runner lunge, framing your front foot with your hands. Keep your fingertips on the block or on the ground. As you come into a twist to the right, take it in together. On the exhale, thread it down like we did before with that squat. Inhale, open it back up. And exhale, thread it. Do that a couple more times. And then I'm going to give you the option to either hold for a bit or continuing to thread to your comfort level. Relax your shoulders a lot. Spread your fingers wide. And slowly release the right hand down. Plant your hand on the ground and step back into a three-legged dog. As you elongate the 
right leg all the way back, circle the ankle around. And then as you bend the knee, maybe you dial the hip open. And maybe you start to circle the hip around as well. That could feel really nice on that right hip. Squaring the hips, elongate the leg back with the in-breath. On the out-breath, release the leg to the ground and breathe, maybe rocking side to side a couple of times. Shifting forward into a plank pose, take a deep in-breath. On the out-breath, lower the right elbow down to the ground. And then follow it with the left elbow holding into an elbow plank. Shift your weight into your left elbow, planting the right hand underneath your right elbow, preparing to use the exhale to press back up into plank. Squeeze your legs a lot. Notice if your hips are collapsing down, lift them up. Squeeze your legs even more. Let's do it again. Lower right far forearm, followed by the left. Shifting your weight into the left. Right hand presses up, back to plank. Squeeze your core center and your legs. Let's do it again. Inhale, right elbow down. Exhale. Leverage the power of the lift and back to plank. Now we're going to do it on the other side. Left elbow comes down first, followed by the right. Left hand presses you back up and into plank. Stay with me, keep it nice and strong and slow. Lower down left, followed by right. Shift into right, press into left and back up. One last time on the left side, you should start to feel this in your core right now. And lifting back up to plank, beautiful. Now give me the knees down, lower all the way to the ground, and find your cobra. Open your heart, draw your elbows back, squeeze those shoulder blades muscles towards one another. Now take your time all the way to your downward dog. And we take the left leg, raise it to the sky with the inhale. We exhale, knee to the chest as you curl. Lengthen it back with the in. The out knee to chest, step foot to left thumb, warrior one on the other side. Finding circular motions throughout the arms and eventually landing in your sphinx pose. Did I say Sphinx pose? <laughs> what the hell? I didn't even know what that was. I meant goalpost arms. <laughs> oh my God, I don't know what that was. Just squeeze those shoulder blades towards one another a lot. Let's take the elbows to the front and open it back up with the in-breath. Out-breath. <sighs> Imagine you have those machines at the gym where you're like pressing, have you ever done that, where you're pressing it together, getting those chest muscles to build. Two more. And the next time that you bring them together, hinge forward, hover over your front thigh, Draw the elbows back and up, squeezing into your shoulder blades muscles. Notice if you're bulging out your rib cage and see if you can find that pelvic or that tiny pelvic tilt so that you're not overly arching. You're just really working on that activity in the upper back. Stay here for one more breath. 
and then expand your arms back, letting those fingertips be free. Either staying here as you squeeze your arms into your body or interlace the hands behind the back and bow forward into a humble warrior. You hear the bird? We hear you. Beautiful. One more in breath together as you plant your palms down onto the ground. Activate both feet really, really firmly and then rise up. Make your way into Parshvottanasana. You're preparing by first extending the leg, taking care of your feet or hip distance apart if they're not, and then bowing forward as you hinge from the hips. Sometimes we walk around thinking that nature isn't actually aware of us. It's also aware of us. The trees are aware, the birds are. Lots and lots of beings that are potentially invisible to us. One more deep in breath. On the out breath, prepare to come into your runner lunge. and start to take your own variation of the twists. So you're first either gonna place a block under your hand, opening up and continuing to do that threading through back and forth with each exhale. Inhale, open again with the twists and exhale. Some of us are choosing to circle the arm around, which is lovely too. I love to see the different unique variations which tells me that you are aware of what your body needs in this moment. Some of you are holding the pose fully. One more deep in breath together. On the out breath, you release the hand and step back in a three-legged dog. Elongating the leg back to take it to either an opening of the hip or maintaining of the leg long. If you open the hip, maybe some circular motions throughout the hip. As you square the hips, elongating the leg, take an in-breath. The out breath, you release the foot down for a full downward dog. Take a deep breath in together and sigh it out. Shift forward into a plank. We'll take another strong core work here. As you press the floor away, take your time to bring the right knee to the ground and then lift it back up, left knee to the ground and lift it back up. This is where you're going to stay. Some of us are going to bring the right knee to chest and step it back, left knee to chest and step it back. That's the second level if you want to go a little bit more fiery. Some of us are going to go really fiery by starting to jog into the plank. Notice how when I'm jogging, it's not like a thumping it's like a nice little light jog. I'm going to do that for another 10, 9, 8, 7. You got this. Drop your butt a little lower. Good. Four, three, two, 
And one, yeah, we're gonna get those cores back. We're gonna get them back. It, 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 this, this quarantine kind of did a number on our cores, including my own. We're gonna get them back. Release the knees and come into your child pose. Just elongate the hips back. Notice the beautiful kind of contrast between the fieriness that we just did and then this kind of release. Earth, Earth Mother. Ah. <sighs> Two more breaths. Now slowly come on out. Bring the knees below the hips and rise into a standing position on your knees. Stand on your knees, sorry. <laughs> standing position on your knees. Make fists circle wrists around. And in the other direction. Shake those wrists. Plant hands on hips, press hips forward and then Draw the sternum forward and up as you press your hips forward. You're still supporting your lower back with your hands. Beautiful. Release back to the ground. Take a couple of arches and curls. And then from your downward facing dog, you're going to take either a float forward or a walk forward and do a forward fold. Rolling up a little bit at a time. Two arms reach overhead with the in breath. The out breath brings the palms to heart space. Take the hands to your hips, shift your weight into your left foot, and come into a, a little bit of a balance, lifting your right foot off the ground, circling ankle around a bit. And take your ankle and cross it over the left thigh as you micro bend your left knee. Notice how as soon as you micro bend that left knee, you're starting to use your left glute muscle, making the balance a lot easier. Again, if you're not directly on the grass, I swear it's so much, so much easier. And you'll get over the whole like weirdness of, of the whatever you don't like on the grass. Now, either stay here or shift your hips more back. Coming into a little bit of a, it's kind of like a reclined pigeon, but standing up. Keep your left knee over your left ankle, nice and strong. And it's like this squat on one leg. Come back to the center, bring your right knee back towards your chest with the in-breath. Your left leg should be shaking by now. You might even lose the balance a little. And in finding your warrior three or airplane position, as you extend the right leg back, keep the left knee super, super bent and draw the hips back more and let it shake more. Know that that shaking is strengthening your ankles, it's strengthening your leg, it's strengthening your foot. But relax your shoulders, they're not doing any work. Taking it in together and out together, one more. Inhale. Exhale, land the foot for your crescent. Bend the back knee, tuck pelvis under, and regain the goalpost arms. Again, inhale, and exhale. One more in-breath. 
on the out, dial the back heel down, open it up to your warrior two. And as you inhale, reach the arms all the way overhead as you extend your left leg. And bring them back into horizontal. Inhale, rise. And exhale, bend. Now finding your side angle lunge, bring your right left hand down towards your left thigh, opening up. Lengthen upwards a little bit more. And then like you're holding your left hand like a tray forward, extend it forward, so that you have this opportunity to really hold the pose just with your core center. Squeeze the pelvic floor muscles. If you're collapsed down to the ground, lift yourself a little bit more up. Yes. One more in-breath together. On the out-breath, bring the left fingertips to left shin. Extend the leg for triangle. Relax your left shoulder. And then slowly return into a runner lunge. Once you find the runner lunge, take your twist again to the left, inhale. With the exhale, release the hand, extend the left leg back into a three-legged dog. Maybe as you bend the knee to dial it open, you kind of shake it up a little bit. It could feel really nice to loosen up through the leg. Maybe a flip dog if it's available and feels good for your body. Returning back into your three-legged dog with an inhale. The exhale, you release the foot to the ground, bend the knees, press the hips back, look forward, and either walk or float forward, forward fold, rising all the way up to stand with the in-breath, the out-breath, palms to heart space. And we shift the weight into the other leg now, taking the left knee up towards the chest, balancing on the right leg. See if you have the opportunity to bend and extend just a couple of times so that you can notice how much more power you have when you bend slightly and squeeze your butt, crossing the left ankle over, drawing the hips back if it's comfortable. Maybe coming in and out of it like I'm doing, too. And that right foot is like suction, sucking the ground. There's this lift of the toes slightly, finding the balls of the feet. It's like you're digging your foot with ground. As you rise, the right heel is pretty active down. And we find our way into that airplane position or warrior three. Keep your gaze on something beautiful. See if the breath can remain soft and long. Two more breaths, stay with me. Landing the foot down for your runner lunge. 
opening the arms either all the way up or into goal post. Bend the back knee a lot. See if that pelvis can tuck under. Feel the core center and the drawing upward. <sighs> you guys look so serious. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> there you go. Beautiful. Relax your shoulders more. <laughs> and now warrior two on the other side. Beautiful. Repositioning of the feet, everyone. There's no reason we're not like stuck in the ground. We can move a little and start to rise and lower, raise and lower the arms as you extend through the leg, just to loosen up through that right leg a little. And after you feel like you've had enough, you can start to prepare for the next pose, which is a side angle. Getting into it on your own terms. Reconnecting with the breath and not losing the ground. And then taking any variations that you wish here. Maybe the expansion of the right arm forward. Maybe you're noticing that you're tensing up and you'd like to start circling the upper arm around a little more. Find the breath. As soon as you come into a constriction, find the breath. Coming into your triangle pose, fingertips onto the shin, extending the leg, elongating, finding the sense of beauty within the posture. I could just like put myself on repeat, relax your shoulders, relax your shoulders, relax your shoulders. Yeah. Notice if your right shoulder is kind of um, internally rotating forward and see if you can, re yes, nicely, yeah. It's so, it's like making me need to cue my assists. <laughs> yes. She got it. One more in breath. And on the out breath, release back down into a runner lunge. Find that nice twist to the right. Open it up. Yeah, reposition your feet correctly first. And then into that three-legged dog as you release the hands down, extending the right leg up and back. Either bending the knee to dial it open or shaking up the leg. Shake, 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 shake. Maybe a flip dog. As you return back into that three-legged dog, inhale with the exhale, bring the knee to the chest, step it forward, dial the back heel down, and walk yourself into a wide-legged forward fold to the left. Yes. So I just wanted to do one of those because they're just so fun. They're just like so nice and I don't want to miss them. Wide, right? It's like, come on, feel jibbed when I don't get that. Shake the head no and yes. Take any variations that you wish here. And inversions are actually a lot easier when you're on the real ground. After a couple more breaths, you'll make your way back into a runner lunge on the right. Stepping back for plank, inhale, exhale, Shataranga Dandasana. Up dog or cobra in, back to downward dog. The right leg rises up towards the sky with the inhale. 
the knee comes, we're coming into a pigeon, half pigeon. So the right knee towards the right thumb, right foot towards the left, settling yourself. If a half pigeon doesn't feel good, you might do it on your back instead. Figure four. Some of us will totally enjoy keeping the spine lifted like this. And this is as far as we go, because it could just be plenty and really comfortable. How does that feel? Does that feel okay? Yeah. So one thing I'd like to also give as an option is the back knee can actually can actually go to the side and bend like this. And you can shift more onto your right side and come into it this way. It's a little bit of a different stretch, but it's lovely, especially for those of us who find the half pigeon on, on inaccessible, unaccessible. In or un? I can't. In unac unaccessible. Can't do it. No. No, I'm just joking. Oh. <laughs> In other words, can't. Do it. Yeah, I'm trying to just not do the negative thing, you know. <laughs> and after you've like settled down into your pose, you might start to feel like, oh, this is getting hard and you can start to feel panicky. And if that happens, just reaccess the breath again. Two more breaths. As you slowly release out of the stretch, take your time to find the other side. However you get there is great. There's no rush. Now, some of us have been taught that it's important to keep the bottom half of the foot kind of parallel to the front of the mat. That's not accurate. Actually, it's not helpful for your knee. So just be as comfortable as you can here, especially if you don't have a block. And again, the allowing that back knee to bend is an option. And go out to the right a little bit more is an option, yeah. Yeah, so bend that back knee just a little more and bring it. Uh, yes, there you go. So in addition to working through the hips, this half pigeon is a inversion. It's like a fold, like a forward fold. And there is this calming, deep calming experience that can happen if you maintain the breath. As you come out of it, wrap the back leg around to find a seated position. Come into easy sitting pose. Reach the left arm all the way up with the in breath and on the out breath, twist to your right. And 
back to center. Right arm reaches up in. Out, twist to your left. Back to center in. Plant the feet in front of you. Make your way onto your backs. And on your back, pull your right knee towards your chest as you extend your left leg down. Deep in breath. On the out breath, elongate the right leg all the way up. Interlace the hands behind the right thigh. Maybe you go a little bit deeper with that hamstring stretch, reaching your right, your arms towards your shin or ankle. And from here, if you can reach your, the outside of your right foot, you can bend the right knee towards the right shoulder to come into like this half happy baby pose. The left knee can also bend so that you're getting a really deep hip stretch here. If it feels accessible and helpful, you can extend, re-extend the right leg to the side. And coming back to the center, doing the wind relieving pose on the left side, left knee to chest. Going into a reclining split. Any variation of the right leg is helpful here. You might even plant your foot on the ground to protect your lower back. Bending the right knee towards the left shoulder, maybe grabbing the outside of the right foot with the left hand. And a possible extension of the left leg all the way to the side. Finding your way into your Shavasana. And kind of handing your body down as if you're carrying this infant and laying the infant down very gently on the softest blanket on a very comfortable bed. And hand your body down. With a sense of trust. And begin to develop this fundamental trust. Many of us did not get that foundation as children. It's never too late to parent ourselves, to find that foundational trust. Silently and inwardly repeat. I trust. I am loved, protected, and guided. I trust. I am 
loved, protected, and guided. You soften your body when you say these words. Let the breath become more and more fluid. Nourishing the body with trust. With earth. With connection to source. Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mritiamam Mritam Gamaya Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Taking your time to bring your hands over your heart space. Acknowledging the divine feminine. Finding gratitude for their love and protection and guidance. Closing the practice with one sound of OM, a deep in breath. Oh. I thank you for allowing me to teach you today. The presence within me bows to the presence within you. Namaste.